So how are you doing today, Mr. Kaufman? Hey, greetings from Tromaville. This is Lloyd Kaufman. And I can tell you that in my 40 years of being a failed filmmaker, being with Ton on the five count is indeed the high point of my career. I don't know about you folks out there, but <laughs> this, is, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. That's amazing. That's thank you. Say. And thank you so much for having me on, Ton. And, and uh, Toxie and uh, Kabuki Man and the Troma team, they are very proud of me. For having made it finally to five count, <laughs> that's amazing! Wow, that's Excellent. quite an honor. Well, let me let me ask you. I've got a few questions here. Obviously, one of the things we were kind of wondering. We're huge fans of Rocky. Also, how did you end up working on Rocky? Well, I um, I drink a lot, and John <laughs> Abelson. I don't know if you've seen me acting in Rocky. Have you seen me in my amazing performance in yeah. Rocky? As we, well. You know, luckily, um, they needed a drunken bum, and uh, since I have a <laughs> for election, I have a proclivity toward uh, the uh, the bar. Um, I um, played that amazing part of the drunken bum, and uh, the rest is history. But they also didn't have enough money to film on location. Uh, Rocky was a very low-budget movie. And John Avelson and I had worked on some other movies, that he directed, uh, like Cry Uncle, a trauma. Do you know Cry Uncle by any chance? It's yep. a trauma release. It's terrific. So John uh, wanted to film on location, and the producers didn't have enough money to film in the real Philadelphia. So we hired the trauma team. We brought our crew from Cry Uncle to Philadelphia, and we non-union, of course. Yep. And we uh, <laughs> we we set up all those locations, like the museum and the. Uh, food market and the pet store and and uh, the gay um, lap dancing club and oh, no, no no that was that was, oh, oops. Uh, <laughs> that was a different uh, yeah. uh, I don't difference. know what uh, you mean by that uh, that had nothing to do with Rocky uh, <laughs> uh, um, at any rate uh, we filmed for about eight days and then the unions found us the Teamsters the truck driver union found us and the producers and uh, Stallone and everybody went back to LA and uh I stayed in New York, but we had basically the, and Michael Hers, my partner for the past 35 plus years, he and his wife Maris were syncing up the dailies from the shoot in Philadelphia. Okay. And uh, they were like, what the heck is this? Like, you know, they were hearing the voice of, uh, yo, Adrian, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, they were wondering what the heck is this on the, uh, and they were syncing up the dailies on our upright movie movieolas. Wow. So that's how I got on Rocky. And when John Avelson got his Oscar, instead of mentioning the big shots at uh, MGM or whoever made the movie, United Artists, he mentioned me. How cool is that? Oh, nice. Yeah. That's very cool. And then I blew him. <laughs> well, that's, that's how it works in Hollywood, right? That's how it works, exactly. And I have lips like a woman. And Wow. I don't have so, Tom, you need, do you know, Tom, that... Uh, that um, there is going to be a trauma retrospective or a Lloyd Kaufman retrospective in Amsterdam, and the guy who is putting it together for the Amsterdam Film Museum, which uh, that you probably don't speak Dutch, but Film Museum means in English Film Museum. Uh, they, they, wow. um, the guy who is putting that together is named Ton. Wow, I had no clue. That's kind of <laughs> yeah. that's Isn't totally that amazing. What a, what a what a world. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. That is crazy. So after you uh, kind of were left behind from the Rocky crew, did you start Troma pretty soon after that? Or? No, Troma was going before that. Oh, it was, Troma okay. Troma started in 1974, and um, one of the ways I supported Troma was that I would go out and get uh, production managing. Well, I was in the Directors Guild of America until I was sort of forced out, and I, w and I would take uh, jobs uh, on Saturday Night Fever and... Uh, uh, Rocky and Final Countdown with uh, Martin Sheen and Kirk Douglas. And that would support, that would kind of pay the rent while Michael Hurst and I were kind of learning the ropes of making a uh, crappy movie. I mean, <clears throat> making our <laughs> own uh, very distinctive trauma movies. Right, right. Yeah, wow. So then it was, uh, you guys did a lot of, I don't know, what did you call them, sex comedies or kind of the front runners for the Porky's movies or whatever those would be right. called. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, the guys who directed Porky's, uh, Bob Clark, talk about how he had seen Squeeze play in Waitress. Yeah. And um, he saw that we were successful and we had opened some doors and and he had more money, so he figured, well, I'm going to do kind of a trauma 
raunchy comedy and uh except i'm going to use pictures and a good screenplay and uh, the rest is history <laughs> so it kind of ripped you off and that's when that was when we moved over to a toxic avenger were you just not making a lot of money with the comedies and decided to go that route or how did that come about well, we're doing okay. We had broken the mold, and uh, you know, in those in the early days, uh, early seventies, you weren't supposed to make comedy mix with sex. You know, sex was a serious genre. Uh, the mm-hmm. sex film was supposed to uh, kind of support the raincoat industry. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, we knew, having read Shakespeare and and having uh, been to burlesque shows, that. Um, Sex and comedy do mix, and there is a audience for raunchy comedy. So I made Squeeze Play, which was a raunchy, goofy comedy about uh, the women's liberation movement. And it was, it was uh, unlike anything anyone had ever seen, so it was a huge financial success. And then we made three or four movies, and then the major uh, studios started to do the same thing. But as I mentioned, uh, they were uh, using good actors and good scripts, so... That's when we had to move over to Toxic Avenger. Okay. That's when we added in, we we created the Cuisinart of a, a genre. We added the sex, the, uh, the slapstick comedy, the satire, and the Grand Guignol uh, graphic gore elements. And Toxic Avenger, of course, has become a big influence on Peter Jackson and all these other people. Yeah, Toxic Avenger was huge. Would you say, like, did things change a lot around Troma after the Toxy thing happened, or? No, no. I don't think so. I mean, you know, we've always been propelled by a, a great love for the cinema, and, uh, you know, we've been pretty insular. We've never, you know, we've never had press agents or public relations people, and we've never really wanted to be owned by anybody you know we've always wanted to own our movies so once that concept was made public of course uh, we got sort of blacklisted Mm -hmm. and uh, so as a result here we are 35 40 years later and we are you know out there pretty much uh, on our own yeah how how did that work out? however thanks to people like you thanks to thanks to uh you know your show ton and uh other independent minded people, the trauma legacy lives on. Yeah, there, there it is. There it is. So well, then thank you. With, with all that stuff, how how did the, the cartoon show come about? For a toxic cartoon show? Was that like yeah, a big the deal or cartoon show I had no idea. Um the comp- the only thing I know is that the company that was making toys regarding the teenage mutant the turtles they thought that the turtles had run out of steam. <laughs> and they wanted an environmental cartoon show and toy uh, franchise. Okay. So they came to us. But what happened was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, uh, a year later, suddenly they picked up steam again, so we didn't last that long. Hmm. That's interesting. To, when you see the the actual movie that the cartoon is based on, and then you yeah see the cartoon with all the... Uh, Kind of Captain Planet sort of overtones or whatever. It's... Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, Captain Planet really sucked. That was horrible. It was basically Toxic Crusaders, except not as good. Yeah. Yeah, Toxic Crusaders was funny. Those those cartoons were really cute. Captain Planet was totally, you know, just just uh, um, what was it? It was it was uh, typical limousine liberal uh, elitist kind of uh, you know. I know what to tell you, kids. You listen to me. You know, mm-hmm. there was no uh, satire or humor, or you know, it, it sucked. SpongeBob, on the other hand, the, today SpongeBob is pretty good. I, I think SpongeBob is great. Yeah. I don't know who makes it, but it's really good. You think you'll find your way onto SpongeBob someday, or <laughs> Maybe I don't think so. But but the um, um, I, I wrote, there were people from Robot Chicken, I think, or no, uh, no, a Family Guy. I think they have been interested in my doing one of the voices, uh, kind of a guest appearance voice. Yeah. Huh. I could see that. Well, I suppose. I would love to. I love Family Guy. Uh, Robot Chicken is for uh, uh, Simpson. I mean, there's great stuff. And, of course, you know, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, uh, their first movie is Cannibal the Music, which is the trauma, yep. the trauma release. And they were big trauma fans, and they're really good, really good guys. 
there is a lot of good, uh, you know, a lot of good uh, satire. I think that has been influenced by uh, what what Trump has been doing all these years. One thing I was interested in is, uh, like you were saying, with the Cannibal the Musical, and you guys uh, just release a lot of films that aren't the in-house films. Like, how do you guys go right. about? Uh, we've only made we've made about a hundred movies, and we have we own about eight hundred uh, movies, right. uh, and. Uh, so and many of those 800 movies are very much trauma inspired. So you know, you'll have a movie like uh, Redneck Zombies, which was very much, which is a terrific movie, and yeah. we had nothing to do with making it, other than putting in some money. But it's very much, if you look at it, you can see that it's very much influenced by uh, the Toxic Avenger and Michael mm-hmm. Myers. How do you guys decide which films to to pick up the rights for? Well, we look for movies that are totally um, an expression of the uh, filmmaker's heart and soul, uh, the movies that are one of a kind. So right now, we've in fact, uh, exclusive to your show, we are today, we just started streaming a wonderful movie on the Troma West called Suicide. And I tell you, you will never in your life see a movie like Suicide. It's the absolutely uh, brilliant brilliant use of the um, handicam uh, format. It's, okay. it's about a couple, a young couple, very attractive, and they're making a documentary about suicide, but they decide, hey, for a lark, let's put up a website saying, if you're going to kill yourself, let us know, and we'll come and film you. And they figure this is, you know, nobody's going to respond to it, and lo and behold, they get besieged with people who want them who, who want to kill themselves and be on film. So they go and they film uh, this uh, old man who's a professor who's got some horrible disease and, and he doesn't want to get his family down and the insurance and, and the expenses of uh, taking care of him. So, uh, so they film him killing himself with an injection. He's a professor. And then there's a teeny bopper couple, who uh, two, two girls who are sort of uh, lesbianic. Uh, they're teeny boppers and kind of manic depressives. And... <laughs> And they take some sleeping uh, potions, but one of them uh, vomits in the bed, and they go in the bed together. And one of them vomits, and and the other one, uh, you know, is dying. But one of them wakes up, and the other one's dead in the bed with her, and and uh, she can't bring herself to kill herself. It's a it's it's an amazing film, and it's a now streaming. Uh, I think it's like fifty cents or something on trauma. dot com. www. trauma. dot com. And there's some amazing one-of-a-kind movies about trauma. That's why we're still here after uh, 30 years. We're, still, we're the oldest independent movie studio, probably the longest running in, in history. Do you see any end in sight for trauma, or are you just going to keep going as long as you can? Or? At the end, I would like to blow my fucking braids out, but um, <laughs> I don't have the guts, so it'll probably go on for a while. And then there's, uh, you know, there's, you know, trauma has a huge base, so... My guess is that if I throw off these mortal coils, there will be uh, a lot of people who want to keep it going. I mean, the, the, the spirit of trauma, the, the idealism, the, the genuine love of uh, genuine independent uh, art is uh, very appealing to people. And, uh, you know, we're living in an age of uh, heavily promoted, uh, over-advertised baby food movies, uh, like Leap Year and uh, The Blind Side and you know, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, trauma is kind of a sort of, out, you know, kind of an idealistic uh, um, outpost for those who really love independent art. Yeah, you... Uh... I, think it, I think it'll keep going. I think it's going to keep going. But also, there's a lot of people in the mainstream. You know, I just played a part in Adam Green. You know him? He made a movie called uh, Hatchet. Okay. And uh, he had a film in Sundance last week called Frozen, which is a masterpiece. He's made Hatchet 2, and he asked me to play a, a tiny, weeny little part in that because he's a trauma fan. And James Gunn, uh, who directed uh, uh, Slither um, and also wrote Tromeo and Juliet for Troma, uh, he's got a new movie called Super with Ellen Page and Ryan Wilson and Kevin Bacon. He had me come down to uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, and I played a very small part. And, and of course, uh, Crank 2, you know, the, the Neville Dean and Taylor who made The Gamer and Crank, the Crank movies, they stick me in their movies. 
So uh, trauma has a pretty big reach. Um, we just don't have a pretty big revenue. Right. <laughs> we have a reach, but no revenue. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you're always in, uh, you just pop up everywhere, it seems, in movies or else you're writing books or well, making you know, appearances. Peter, and... Peter Jackson, Quentin Tarantino, uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, uh, Takashi Miike in Japan, Alex Iglesia in Spain, you know, all over the world. Gaspar Noé did Irreversible. You know, they're all uh, big fans of our movies. You know, they were young and uh, for our films and, you know, kind of went through the doors that we opened and but have been able to uh, use some of the themes and, and elements that Troma pioneered, but yet they've been able to kind of uh, mainstream them, you know. So that, right. You know, South Park cartoons have 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 dismemberments and uh, you know a very subversive satire, but they've been able to make it appealing. You know, they've been able to sort of do the not make poultry guys. You know, poultry guys Night of the Chicken Dead is is too much. And yeah. So as a result, <laughs> nobody shows. You know, the movie will never play on television. It'll probably never play. Although we just uh, I was in Denver last week and. They showed it, Landmark showed it uh, Friday and Saturday nights, and they had about 500 people. So, uh, it was a 35-millimeter print, and uh, it was, I, I mean, I, I, it's just, I think we're just too independent. You know, we don't have any alliances. I think if we had some some alliances with some big company, you know, maybe we wouldn't be living in a refrigerator carton or whatever, but, <laughs> but we've never been able to really make any friends in the establishment. Well, it seems like once you do that, though, then you kind of have to compromise your, your work, you know. Well, I don't know, because, you know, uh, Oliver Stone was in my early movie, Battle of Love's Return, and also we did Sugar Cookies together. He's been able to stay true to his ideals. He may be a psycho, but he's, you know, he hasn't <laughs> had to compromise, and he's a, he's an honorable person. Uh, I mean, I, there are people, James Gunn is the best, you know, he's terrific. And, uh, you know, he's he just... You know, he did. He after Tromeo and Juliet, he he wrote Scooby Doo and Dawn of the Dead remake, and mm -hmm. which is the best zombie movie, probably the scariest zombie movie ever. And 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 you know, he gets to do his. He's directed Slither, where he had total freedom, I think. And certainly, this movie Super that I just did is a totally original, uh, personal movie. And you know, I think I think you can get what you want without having to, you know, do what I did, which was sort of. Uh, you know, be a little bit too Trump-esque. You know, uh, uh, I, I think, you know, Trey and Matt, Trey Parker and Matt Stone get what they want, and, and yet they're able to be kind of friendly to the establishment. I, I think you can, I just couldn't do it. I just wasn't able to negotiate the corridors of power the way uh, these guys can. And, uh, and you know, and uh, good for them. Too many full head-crushing scenes, probably. <laughs> well, I, I, well, I think also... I think I just, in my younger days, I, from what I've been told by friends of mine who've gotten Oscars and shit, uh, uh, I apparently don't have a good reputation. <laughs> and I regret it. You know, I, I think I was just too, too out there. You know, too uh, kind yeah. of, you know, too, too. Uh, you know, I, did you see that Andy Kaufman movie, uh, Moon Man or whatever it was, by Niels Foreman? He was a friend of mine, uh, Andy Kaufman. You know the guy who was on Taxi and mm -hmm. yeah. and had and and they, they you know they made that movie, A Man on the Moon. Yep, I saw that. Marigold, whatever it was. Um, Milos Forman directed it. He got off by just sort of pissing people off, and you know I think that was a lot of his motivation. And I'm unfortunately when I was younger, I think I was motivated in large part by the idea of just kind of stirring the shit. And you know, it, it, I, I it, as I'm older and a little wiser, I, I, I think I probably went. If you look at uh, all the love you can, the documentary about uh, Troma's many years at the Cannes Film Festival, and we're kind of famous there. There's a documentary, All the Love You Can, C A N N E S, and and you can see that we really are obnoxious. I mean, I think we did ourselves a lot of harm by uh, throwing blood on people and having you know naked men and women in the lobby of five-star hotels and, <laughs> and, you know, wearing diapers, you know. I, I, I you know, in, in the fullness of time, clearly, 
you know, we were a little too much. You know. I mean, the French compared me to uh, a French newspaper. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it compared me to Marcel Duchamp, who put the uh, urinal up in the... Uh, he had a urinal as an artist in the American Modern Exposition in Paris, either 1913 or 1907, whatever, <clears throat> and fist fights broke out, and, and, you know, he sort of... You know, he signed he signed the urinal, you know, as if it's art, and <laughs> it was very controversial. And and I've been, you know, the French compare me to him, and um, I sort of probably screwed myself by, you know, kind of reveling in the uh, stirring the soup too much. But at the same time, I think a lot of that stuff is what uh, you know. I guess the underground fans love about Troma, I suppose. Well, I've been lucky, uh, you know, I've been able to keep making movies and uh, keep having total freedom, you know, nobody tells me what to do, and, and luckily we do have a pretty big fan base. If you go to, you know, my my uh, Twitter or Facebook or MySpace or, or Troma.com, um, you know, our fans take good care of us. As I, uh, you know, um, I was in Chicago not too long ago, and boy, the fans turned out for poultry guys, you know, with no advertising. Yeah, and the last week Denver and uh, L.A. and you know the fan. You know, if I just put a little thing up on uh, on my Twitter, uh, the Lloyd Kaufman Twitter, um, that that alone, uh, they're very loyal. The fans are really really loyal, and that's the only reason we're still around. But it's a it's a cult. You know, we are indeed a cult film phenomenon. How involved would you say that you are in Troma? Like, what's the typical day-to-day -day for Lloyd Kaufman in Troma? Well, I don't think there's any typical day, but, you know, right now I'm spending a fair amount of time on my own because I'm trying to write uh, the, the Toxic Avenger Part 5, the Toxic Twins about Toxie's offspring. And <laughs> Gabe Friedman, Gabe wrote most of Poultry Guys. He and I are working on a script that is kind of a personal... Uh, I think it'll be sort of a realistic uh, terror firmer kind of a movie, but it'll be more personal about uh, being an artist. And I mean, it'll still be comedy, sure, and uh, self-respect and or lack of thereof. And uh, then I've got another book. You know, the book "Produce Your Own Damn Movie" just came out, and I've I've got another book that I'm working on called "Sell Your Own Damn Movie." <laughs> okay. So I'm working on that. <laughs> so, um, you know, a fair amount of my time is spent in, you know, kind of alone, kind of writing or thinking or outlining or taking notes. And, and um, you know, today at Troma, we filmed uh, we filmed a um, introduction to the Blu-ray of uh, Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead. Okay. Um, you know, that, 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 uh, actually, we have come up, Troma have come up with a, an advanced a technique uh, regarding Blu-ray, but it's... It's called Brown Ray, and it's very, very <laughs> special. So Poultry Guys will come out in April on uh, the very exclusive uh, medium of Brown Ray. Nice. <laughs> Actually, if you go to YouTube uh, and you punch in uh, Troma Digital Studios or My Name Lloyd Kaufman or Poultry Guys, or whatever, mm -hmm. you can find uh, – we did, we did a behind-the-scenes so our fans can see exactly – what brown ray is so uh, go to blue uh, go to youtube and All right. and you'll be able to find uh, poultry guys brown ray blu ray lloyd kaufman trauma whatever and i'll be, be checking there. that out also um i had to meet today because the yale university uh from which i graduated the uh first alumni weekend occurs september 26th through 28th and they have asked me to come up with a theorem well, Purim, um, play. You know, Purim is a Jewish holiday uh, which comes out of the Book of Esther, and it's a holiday where Jews uh, wear, it's sort of a Jewish uh, Halloween. You wear costumes, and it comes from the Book of Esther, Queen Esther. So uh, I like to dress up as Queen Esther myself. <laughs> but um, at any rate, uh, the, uh, well, I came up with the theme, that because the story of Esther in the Bible deals with the king and an evil vizier and the vizier or vizier, whatever it is, and how the vizier tried to trick the king into exterminating the Jews. And so it's one of the earliest uh, themes of uh, what is near and dear to us, namely genocide. 
And um, so uh, we're going to do something up at Yale. The students are going to write a, a, a spiel or a, a program, that will, a theatrical program, the, uh, dealing with the genocide of art. So, mm -hmm. you know, mantra of uh, the devil-worshipping international media conglomerates strangling the independent art world uh, will uh, have another iteration. So I'm kind of working on that. And, uh, you know, I've got a lot of different things. You know, we're always working on a lot of different things. When do you think the uh, new Toxic Avenger will be coming out? Well, I, I have to figure out the beginning, middle, and end. That's oh, okay. the big thing. <laughs> yeah. I know that it's going to concern Toxie's twins that were born in Citizen Toxie. Did you see Citizen Toxie by yep. any chance? Yep. Yeah. At the end of it, you know, there's Toxie and his significant other, Sarah, have uh, babies. And uh, the Toxie Part 5 will con concern the toxic twins. But I, I haven't been able to get a beginning, middle, and end yet. And, uh, you know, it, if you look at my body, if you look at my film career, you can see that there's a pretty long uh, period between movies, mainly because I, I'm really, really excited or really, really believe in uh, uh, storyline. I can't bring myself to make the movie. So um, I've got to figure out the, the, the plot of Toxie 5, and I haven't come close yet. Okay. Well, if you need us to come over for any uh, any death <laughs> scenes or anything, we can fly up there. Yeah, well, when we film it, you should be in it. But I need to get the story. I don't know where it's going. You know, that would be amazing. Yeah, you'd be more than welcome. It'd be great, absolutely. Okay. All the celebrities, you know, whether it's James Gunn or Lemmy or Ron Jeremy or you know these other famous people who are in our movies. They just do it because they like uh, trauma. You know, Judah Friedlander is wearing a trauma T-shirt in 30 Rock. You know, nobody gets paid for the trauma movies. They just uh, want to keep us alive. You know, they right. want to they make us survive. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Eli Roth, uh, you know, just got the Screen Actors Guild Award for uh, Bastards. What's the name of the movie? Inglorious Bastards. Bastards. Yeah, in, in Glorious Bastards. He just got the Screen Actors Guild Award. But meanwhile, he's twittering uh, trauma, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, they want to keep us alive. So uh, that's really great because, um, you know, we are kind of economically blacklisted. Yeah. The Cannibal the Musical has never been on American television. It sold how many hundreds of thousands of DVDs? The Citizen Toxie has never been on American television. The Poultry Geist has never been on American television. Why? Those are all successful movies, and and well received critically. Yeah. Poultry Guys had the big write up in the New York Times, Entertainment Weekly. Uh, you know, I'm compared to Paul McCarthy and uh, the artist Paul McCarthy and George Romero and John Ford and Chaplin and and yet uh, we're blacklisted, economically blacklisted. So that's you know it's hard for us. You know, it's very difficult for us to survive. Do you think that's uh, no. because of the way that the film industry is set up these days? or Yes, the film industry is set up where a small number of these giant conglomerates are the gatekeepers. And unless the fans really get pissed off, unless thousands of people write to uh, HBO and demand that they play Poultry guys, Poultry Geist is never going to be on, or Showtime, unless thousands of fans write to Showtime, Poultry guys will never be on TV. Well, we'll try to set up a grassroots campaign for you in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, um, you know, we had a trauma palooza in, in uh, Minneapolis a couple of years ago. And uh, and um, Mike Etall, in fact, I shot a music video there. Mike Etall, who's a genius in Minneapolis, did all the special effects. Uh, there's a band called Faggot. I don't know if you know. Uh, are you near Minneapolis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a theater there called the, um, anyway, it's the only independent movie theater. Uh, they played uh, Poultry Guys and Citizen Toxie and Terra Firma and Trump and Juliet. You know, every time I make mm -hmm. a movie, they, they're the ones who play it. Um, at, at one of our openings, the this band played called Faggot, and then uh, they asked me to do a music video. So we made a music video in uh, Minneapolis. You can see it, I think it's on... Uh, Vimeo, it's on Vimeo. Okay. Uh, if yeah. you go, if, if if you, I I don't have it on me, but I can. 
if somebody wants to uh, email LloydKaufman.com, uh, LloydKaufman.com, I'll send you the uh, password on Vimeo because uh, they didn't want it on YouTube. Um, the the band uh, wants, you know, they'll give it away for free, no problem. They just want to keep it on Vimeo. But the um, video is called The Cleaner, and we shot it at Minneapolis. It's really good. And we also had a had a uh, Troma Palooza concert to raise money for the Troma Dance Film Festival. And that was very, very successful. It was terrific. It was really great. Awesome. Well, is there any uh, final words you'd like to leave for your Minnesota fans? Or Well, I think the main words is to thank our fans because uh, not just our Minnesota fans, but our fans everywhere because there is no question that, uh, that our fans, they're the ones who run the Troma Paloozas. You know, when I travel, they pick me up at the airport. They're the ones who, uh, when I talk on uh, MySpace or Facebook or Twitter, I guess Twitter now, they, um, they're they the ones that spread the the bird about poultry guys. They're the ones who spread the bird. They're the ones who, uh, <laughs> they, they come pick me up at the airport because, you know, I can't afford uh, limos. And, and uh, you know, the, the fans are really uh, the reason trauma is still around. You know, it's all... Uh, you know, word of mouth. Uh, the fans keep the word of mouth. In fact, with Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dead, uh, uh, the fans are uh, creating word of beak, and uh, we really appreciate it. So uh, I would like to thank the fans of Minneapolis. And, and in fact, you know, I am, I am the chairman of the Independent Film and Television Alliance. The Independent Television Alliance, uh, otherwise known as IFTA, IFTA, is the trade association for the independent film industry. Chrome is a member, Roger Corman's company is a member, the, the people who produced Lord of the Rings and Million Dollar Baby and, you know, big independent movies and small independent movies, they're all... And uh, we go down to Washington and lobby uh, for, um, you know, independent cinema to try to explain to the Congress and to the Justice Department and the, Fed and the uh, Federal Communications Commission that um, independent art is indeed being strangled by these giant conglomerates and that, uh, you know, we need to protect and bring back some of the regulations that used to protect the public against monopoly. And, um, you know, our fans uh, are very helpful in spreading the word, you know, that uh, independent cinema is indeed, not just independent cinema, but independent art is indeed under assault. Right. And not just under assault. It, it's also uh, under uh, not just assault, but a pepper. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. If you take my name, Lloyd Kaufman, and go on uh, YouTube uh, and go to media consolidation or net neutrality on the Internet, I made a public service announcement. Uh, uh, maybe you guys could post it and help uh, help the cause. Uh, it's, it's actually very amusing, and it's aimed at young people. Uh, it's a, um, a, a public service announcement, a warning about media consolidation and... Uh, and, and urging people to protect net neutrality on the internet, meaning the free, open, and democratically diverse internet. Right. Yeah. So uh, maybe you guys could find that URL and, and post it on your website. That would yeah, be really definitely, good. definitely. And it's it's also fun. it's a, an amusing uh, public service announcement, and as I say, it it brings this issue to young people. Yeah, it's great. The issue the issue of media consolidation and how dangerous it is. And, uh, and also how we must protect the free, open, and diverse uh, Internet. And, uh, and uh, thanks to the Independent Film and Television Alliance, of which I am the chairman, um, you know, we're down in Washington uh, fighting uh, to try to preserve the, at least the, the notion of independent art. Well, that's great. Um, yeah, I want to thank you. I think we want to thank you here for calling in. It's really great. Uh, you're probably, you, you've got to be our highest profile guest here on the show highest profile hands down well thank you um i you know again i think it's great that you guys uh you know are um you know enlightened and visionary enough to uh, not be afraid to have the trauma message broadcast and uh, you know keep up the good fight uh, it's very important you know we're living in an age of uh very dangerous giant conglomerates in every industry and uh you know, America was made great not by uh, huge uh, devil-worshipping international media conglomerates, but by uh, the work and uh, artistry of individual uh, citizens. And uh, that is what Chris Jefferson and all those guys, 
uh, we're about. So uh, we need to, uh, you know, help the American spirit. Otherwise, we will uh, end up in a uh, swamp of uh, baby food, movies, and <laughs> art, and uh, Octomoms, and the Today Show, and uh, you know, it's really disgusting. <laughs> so uh, I mean, you know, Minneapolis is kind of a, a you guys have a. A, a, a breath of fresh air there, you know. You, you know and Minnesota is interesting because you know you've got enlightened uh, government. You've got, you know, it's a pretty. I think you you all may not realize what the rest of the uh, world is undergoing because somehow you guys do have a pocket of, uh, of free thinking. Uh, it's interesting. I don't know. What do you, or do you think that's true? Or? It seems that you you you're enlightened. You're a little more enlightened in Minnesota, in Minnesota than in most of the rest of the country. In some respects, definitely, I I, yeah. I think the same way. I, it maybe you're right as far as you know. We just don't see it because it's just the everyday thing. But um, yeah, in a in a way, um, at the same time, I think that there's people here that take that almost to the little too much extreme. Mm. Um, you know thinking that they are more enlightened than than you know mm -hmm. necessary sort of thing but yeah. you know you run into that wherever yeah you're right well that's great uh, um, certainly uh, uh, trauma and the toxic avenger are very very grateful to uh, my fans in minneapolis and thank you very much for uh, uh, bringing us to the attention of your listeners and good luck with everything all right it's definitely been an honor talking with you today well, thank you. Thank you from Tromaville. And uh, please uh, check out the uh, public service announcement about net neutrality and media consolidation on, on YouTube because it's a very, very important image uh, in this day of uh, these giant uh, media conglomerates. All right. We'll get that posted up for you. Fantastic. Well, keep in touch. Let me know what's going on. And uh, good luck and thanks for spreading the trauma love. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Bye, General.